when you see a person in a uniform, don't assume they are extra special or smart. They just mm. happen to be in a position of authority. And so Feynman was a wildly curious and smart and playful and kind of weird um, human who also happened to be um, one of the best physicists who ever lived. And so, I mean, if you had to boil it down, he had courage. He um, thought for himself. He hated when people would um, pretend to know more than they did about anything. He knew as a scientist how hard it is to prove even a small thing true. And so when people spoke about large things, which of course we hear all the time now in our politics and mm -hmm. our institutions that, you know, back up, um, work hard, learn something small that's true and then take it from there. And so to me, he's a role model and um, he's someone who most of us don't know about or certainly think about much anymore. And I wanted to um, I wanted to bring him back. It was very democratic. It wasn't the kind of hierarchy of uh, where you had to know your place. You point was everybody's place was to say anything they wanted to anybody else. I never knew who I was talking to. I would only worry about the physics. If the idea looked lousy, I said it looked lousy. If it looked good, I said it looked good. <laughs> Simple proposition. I've always lived that way. It's nice. It's pleasant. If you can do it, I'm lucky. I'm lucky in my life that I can do that. Well, I took the stuff that I got out of your seal and I put it in ice water. And I discovered that when you put some pressure on it for a while and then undo it, it maintains, it doesn't stretch back, it stays the same dimension. In other words, for a few seconds at least, and more seconds than that, there's no resilience in this particular material when it's at a temperature of 32 degrees. I believe that has some significance for our problem. And I wish there were more people like Feynman who could serve as, let's call it, public intellectuals. Now, Feynman would hate mm -hmm. to be called that because mm -hmm. he didn't think of himself as an intellectual. He didn't really like engaging with the public. But I think this goes back to what I mentioned earlier, courage um, to work really hard to understand what's true and what's not true. <laughs> He decided, I'm going to live a life of pursuing joy, pursuing science, which for him was joy, and being deeply, deeply true to himself. And, and that's what he did. And that's why I really feel he was a model.
at the end, when the success was found, all of a sudden, the original intention of all these scientists, many of whom, let's not forget, were refugees from Nazi Germany and elsewhere, many of whom were Jewish, and then Feynman, who was Jewish as well, their whole intention was to build a bomb to, to combat the German bomb effort under Werner Heisenberg. Now, all of a sudden, <laughs> Germany had surrendered and the bomb gets dropped, two of them, on Japan. Right. This left Feynman and many others in a kind of existential funk for a variety of reasons. The biggest one really being that he believed that once the nuclear bomb existed, once nuclear weapons existed, that humankind was done. 